Hi everyone, I chose to do my presentation on Led Zeppelin. First, I'm going to start with who is Led Zeppelin. They were an English rock band formed in 1968. They consisted of four band members, which were all male, and their style influences are said to have included blues, psychedelic, and folk. And to this day, they're still considered to be one of the most innovative and influential bands of all time. And in total, they received, uh, sorry, they released eight studio recorded albums and then a couple of live recorded albums. The first member of the band is Jimmy Page. He played guitar. He was the one who really got the band together. Um, originally, he was in a band called The Yardbirds. And when they decided to break up, he still wanted to keep going on the tour with the rest of the dates. So he got three other um, musicians and had them kind of audition for him so that he could hear them in their element and ultimately created the new Yardbirds, which just then was renamed Led Zeppelin. And he's originally credited for their... Uh, initial sound and the lyrics he wrote most of the first songs um, mostly because he really knew the direction that he wanted to take Led Zeppelin and really took charge with that. Next is Robert Plant. He was the vocalist for the band. He gained his musical interest around age 10 and didn't initially plan on being a musician. He was actually supposed to be an accountant but found his way into music. Um, at 16, he left home to pursue music and just wanted to gain experience by being in different bands and um, just being around different musicians. And he eventually was recommended to uh, Paige by someone who uh, turned down his offer to be in the band and told him uh, that Robert Plant had a really distinctive voice and he was really worth a shot so he auditioned and initially Paige thought there had to be something wrong with him because he was really amazing and wasn't picked up by anyone yet but nonetheless he just hadn't really been known by anyone and since then he is now well known from his long blonde hair and his flamboyant and often shirtless performances on stage. Next, we have John Bonham, the drummer. He began playing drums at age 5 and got his first kit at age 15. He's considered to this day the number one drummer of all time by Rolling Stone. Um, and he used to use the longest and heaviest drumsticks and would refer to them as trees. And most of his musical styling, I would say, is self-taught. And he was very well known for his speed, power, fast bass drumming, and feel for the groove. And his death is ultimately the reason that Led Zeppelin decided to no longer uh, be a recording band. And next we have John Paul Jones. He was the bassist and he also played keys. He began playing piano at age six. He's from a family of musicians. They actually used to tour the three of him, his father, mother, and himself. And at age 15, he joined his first band called the Deltas. And for most of his career, he was a session recording artist. He was very well known by many bands and very well liked. Um, he was very talented with his ability to play for different artists and their personal sounds. And that is actually how he crossed paths with uh, Jimmy Page because he was also a session recording artist and when he found out that Page was looking for a new band he asked if he was in need of a bassist and Page was ecstatic knowing the extensive musical um, knowledge and ability that John Paul Jones had so he invited him to join the band right away. In the beginning they were still known as the new Yardbirds as they were a continuation or supposed to be a continuation from the Yardbirds. They had their first show on September 7th, 1968, but eventually were renamed Led Zeppelin and the name actually came from Keith Moon who 
was a drummer in the band The Who. And they were definitely a different band from the beginning. They didn't really like their TV appearances and things like that the way that normal bands were marketed. So initially they didn't gain as much popularity, but now they are compared to being the Beatles of the 70s, or at least having the influence that the Beatles had of the 70s, um, or sorry, that the Beatles had in the 60s, that they had in the 70s. Their first album, Led Zeppelin I, was released in 1969. It was before they were signed, and it was a mixture of their originally, uh, original work and covers, and after this album was released, Robert Plant has mentioned that he wasn't really invested into the band yet and had plans to probably quit, but after the second album, he really indulged into his music and into the band and ultimately stayed. Led Zeppelin II was released in 1969. This is considered to be their heaviest album. Um, as in the sound, and it is the first of their albums to hit number one on the popular charts. It was, and still is, widely considered to be the most influential album, um, and it was certified 12 times platinum. Their next album, Led Zeppelin III, was released in 1970, and this was a little bit of a different album. There was a lot more of a acoustic sound and a like lighter influence and this came from a writing session shared by Page and Plant. Originally this did confuse critics about the band and their sound just because it seemed so different um, and it is now seen as like a very pivotal moment of their sound and their change and to this day is still very widely talked about. And the shipping date for the album release was actually delayed because of the album artwork. There was like an inner cover that had a bunch of artwork on it and the outer cover had cutouts to display it. And it was a lot of detail so it ended up taking longer than initially expected. Led Zeppelin 4 was released in 1971. This contains the infamous Stairway to Heaven song, which is considered to be one of the most influential rock songs um, of all time. And this was actually written mostly inside of a country house, which inspired a lot of different sound and um, different material for the band because it left them with a different environment to be able to create in. And this is now considered to be one of their best-selling albums. Next we have Houses of the Holy. This was released in 1973 and by this time the band had really grown in their own musical styling and most of them had at-home studios making it possible for them to work a lot harder on their sound and the development of the songs making them a bit more intricate so it really shows within this album and this had great commercial success. It reached uh, 11 time platinum and out of 500 it's ranked number 148 of the greatest albums of all time. Physical Graffiti was released in 1975. This originally was content enough to cover three sides of an LP so they decided to just double it and make it a two album release and put a lot of unreleased tracks for example that were written during the time of um, Houses of the Holy onto physical graffiti and this album is described more as a rock influence and it was both commercially and critically successful and it reached number one on a lot of top charts and some people believe that this is their best album. Presence was a different type of album. It was released in 1976. Um, this was during the time that Robert Plant and his wife were in a car accident, so their tour dates were canceled, um, and instead of touring, they decided to record an album. It took a few weeks, uh, but it was a different sound just because Plant was recovering and he wasn't able to do things like play keys or uh, acoustic guitar, so it didn't have as much of a success. It was actually their lowest selling album. Um, 
of any of their studio albums of all time. And a lot of people didn't really perceive it well at the time, but now it is very well liked and considered to be a bit of a slower, um, kind of more relaxed work of theirs and more, like, I would say appreciated for that now versus back then after it being released during that time period. And their last studio recorded album was In Through the Outdoor. It was released in 1979 and it was recorded over a three week period and originally released with six different album jackets wrapped in a uh, brown paper bag. And this album was written during a time that each of the band members were kind of suffering a little bit of a hardship in their own way. For example, Robert Plant had been in his car accident and then um, he had lost his son. So he wrote for the first time a uh, song in memory of his son. And the rest of the band was kind of suffering under the realization of what record companies and their... Um, associates were kind of capable of doing and they were worried about their band so this album was really written towards a lot of their fears in a way um, and a lot more emotional it was the last to be released before they stopped recording together due to the death of John Bonham um, and it had huge commercial success there were some hardships that the band did face during their time of being active recording artists. In 1975, Robert Plant and his wife were in a car accident and they were pretty badly injured. Uh, nobody died, but he did have a long recovery period, which did cause their um, tour to be put on hold and um, the whole kind of sound difference within the Presence album. So that really did overall affect the whole of the band and their career. And then two years later, he also lost his five-year-old son, Carrick, due to a stomach virus, which ultimately affected him a lot, um, even made him consider what he really wanted for his future and whether or not music was what he needed. Um, ultimately, he did decide to continue with music after some reflecting time and ended up writing many songs in his career um, in dedication to his son. And then in 1980, when John Bonham passed away, that was ultimately the end of Led Zeppelin as the world knew it, I guess. Um, they decided that because of his death, they did not want to record anymore as a band without him. And out of respect for him and his family, they decided to halt all recording and um, appearances and ultimately break up. And then um, their overall influence, Led Zeppelin is credited for influencing a lot of hard rock, heavy metal, and some punk bands, um, as well as moving our musical styling from psychedelic to a more rock and roll feel that we have today. I think that it's amazing to see the generations that are still discovering Led Zeppelin and still finding their love for them as a band and even as people, I think that they're just all talented musicians that really came together and created a lot of art and it's still appreciated by everyone in all corners of the world, um, which I think is just something really special and not something that you find a lot, especially now. Um, things don't tend to stay popular for generations. It's more like a week or two. Um, so I really appreciate that aspect of Led Zeppelin, and I think that their influence will be carried over for many, many more generations. That is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for watching.